Welcome back to the ninth episode in creating a third person controller. If this is the first episode you're seeing and you want to create a third person controller or just learn more about state machines, check the description for the playlist where you can find all the episodes from this course. Today we're getting one step closer for our project being operational again by creating a parent state machine that all of our movement states can inherit from. So we don't have to write the same code over and over again. Quick reminder, like and subscribe if you're learning something new. Want the full course right now? Join my Patreon or become a channel member to access everything immediately. Links below. Now let's get into it. Okay guys, welcome back. Just a quick note, I realized in the last episode I accidentally deleted some code. So I'm just going to put that back. It was current state dot enter, I believe, uh, which should happen after we set the current state. Um, okay, so I saw that on the cutting room floor and I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. Um, so we'll just add that back there. Um, Okay, so where we're at so far is that we've got a state machine that can theoretically run the states. And we have a skeleton for what a state is, but we don't have anything that does anything. So if you ran this right now, I don't think anything happened, possibly even crash. I, it seems like everything just runs as normal because even though the current state is being set, I believe idle, if that wasn't there, I think it would crash. Um, but because idle doesn't do anything, right? Like we're running state input and state update, um, but we're just returning out of those. So we need to build up something that can get us the same as this. And so we're going to aim to just go slow and incremental so that we can get to the point where we can separate all of our states and we can build it up from there. So what I'm actually going to suggest is that we create an additional class that sits in between the state and these movement based states that can control all the different functions that we would normally use for movement, like getting the input and processing the speed. And we can just call them as required in the individual states. I'm going to use this class to sort of leverage that and make it easy. So we don't have to redefine everything every time we want to make a state, right? Because ultimately idle and run aren't really that different, only that there's no input. Like if you look at what's happening here, when we're not actually going to be, you know, having any velocity, we're just multiplying the direction by speed. And so if you're not inputting anything, then direction is going to be zero. And so that's all that idle is. They, they basically are going to be calculating the same things, but then run will be ultimately something different. And so what we are going to do is obviously in the player state machine under states, we're going to create a new uh, script and it's going to inherit from state and it's going to be called motion. Okay, after we've created the motion script, we'll just double click it here and we can start working on it. And so it extends state, and then I'm gonna give it a class name of motion. So right now we really only need three functions to get us rolling. So I'm gonna create one here called set direction, right? And it's going to return void, and I'll just put pass in there for now. We'll actually also need to create a variable for our direction. There's a concept in Godot, this is fairly new, called a static variable. And what this means is that this variable will be shared between all the subclasses that inherit from motion, which is a really convenient way of us sharing variables that we would want to persist between states. So the input, for example, is something that we do want to carry over when we switch between idle run and even jump. So input direction is actually is, oh, I need to set a type. The input directions type is going to be a vector two. And for now, it's just going to be equal to vector two dot zero. And then also we need a variable called direction, which is going to be a vector three and going to be equal to a vector three dot zero. And you'll see that this is going to mimic pretty closely these variables here. We're actually, I'm going to recreate this, not as a single function, but as like a group of smaller functions. So right here, we get the input from however we get the input, which in this case is left, right, up, down. So that's WASD keys. And then we multiply it by the transform basis, which is actually a vector three, which is why direction is a vector three. And that's fine, um, but just be aware, even though direction is technically a vector two, we do convert it to a vector three for convenience sake. So let's go back to our motion script. Okay, so we've got set direction and we're going to input direction and direction. And so what we can do is essentially uh, recreate that exact same uh, function. So we've got input dir 
um, is equal to input dot get vector. And here we just put all the different vectors. So we got left. I don't think it matters the order you do these in right up and down. Okay. We'll make that look nice and neat. And then the direction. And we'll set that to, and it's going to be a little bit different than the player. So what you'll notice here is we're getting the transform dot basis. This is pretty important. Now, as the parent, like being a character body, it does have a transform basis, but where we're doing this calculation, the state machine doesn't have that. It's node. It doesn't even inherit from the 3d. It can't actually perceive the 3d world. So what we need to do is find another way to get that. There's a couple of options. But what is easiest in this situation is to use the keyword owner and the keyword owner returns the owner of this particular scene, which will be the player. Now I recommend you use this keyword sparingly, but in this case, I think it's okay. Transform dot basis. And we'll multiply that by the vector three and we'll put input der dot X and zero and then input der dot uh, y and so you can see how the 2d input is then translated to the basis and where you can have the up and down related to the z vector which would be your forward and backward and obviously y is zero which would be up and down like for your jump so this is how that sort of gets put together and then all of this needs to be normalized Okay, and that's all there is for that. Since this is a st static variable, we don't have to return it to the particular function. We can just use that. We can call this function set direction in the process or in the update function of each state, and it will update the direction and that will persist through all the different states that inherit the class motion. Okay, and then finally, we want to calculate velocity. And this is going to take a couple of different variables, none of which exist yet, but we'll work on that. Uh, first will be the speed. So how fast do we actually go? Next will be direction and it's a vector three. And obviously that's gonna come from the set direction, but we'll leave it open so that we can just pass in whatever we want in the situation. And the final is the delta, uh, which we'll probably just pass in through the update function. All right, this returns void. And we'll just put a pass in there for a second. Okay, so the velocity, we're gonna use a speed. We will just, we'll, what we'll do for now is we'll just copy these two. We're gonna set up something completely different, but for now, uh, let's just go with what's given to us. So I'll bring in some variables, the constant speed and jump velocity. Uh, where do they get the gravity from? Get gravity, okay. I don't know if I'll be able to call that. Uh, but we can create something. What does that inherit from? Vector three, get gravity. That's a physics body 3D. So uh, no, <laughs> we won't be able to use that. So you can go const uh, gravity is a float and it's equal to 9.8. We'll just use that for now. We'll set up something different in, in a later episode to get more fine tuning out of that. We also need to create a velocity. So I'll create a static variable here as well uh, because we want the velocity to persist between different classes. So it'll be velocity. Um, it's a vector three and we'll start that as a vector three dot zero. I forgot a three. Okay. So you can see here that they're sort of using a velocity move towards. So that's fine. We're going to do the exact same thing quite like that function, to be honest, for velocity. I don't think there's any reason to do anything different, um, especially for a project like this. So velocity X equals move towards, and we'll go velocity dot X, um, and then it'll be direction dot X multiplied by speed. And then we'll probably just need an acceleration. So we can set up a constant for acceleration, make it a float, and we'll just make it something like a thousand. If we're gonna multiply by Delta, so acceleration multiplied by delta. And we'll need to do the exact same thing for z. It'll just be velocity dot z equals move towards velocity dot z. And then the exact same thing, direction dot z. Uh, remembering that's a vector three multiplied by speed. And then the same acceleration multiplied by delta. 
Let's just make that look a little bit nicer. Okay. So the only thing that's really left is how do we get this to actually do anything to the player? Because right now, like it's fine, this script, you can see how it might calculate velocity, but at the end of the day, how character body 3D works is that you need to be calling move and slide for it to do anything. So what we can actually do is set up a signal to be emitted by this motion script to emit to the player and update the velocity variable, which is a like, which is an inbuilt variable on the character body 3D. So if that has a, a, a number, like if it's greater than zero and you call it move and slide, it will move in the direction of that velocity variable. So, so we can create a function in our character body 3D, which we can call uh, set velocity from motion and it'll take velocity, uh, we'll just call vel and it'll be a vector three and it returns void. And all we need to do is say velocity, this is the inbuilt parameter. You can see it there by dot P is equal to val, right? And that's all we need to do for that. Now, how do we get this into the set, into the character body? Well, there's two ways that we can do it. Um, we can go through and we can make an assumption, right? So we can assume that the state machine, all of these are gonna inherit movement because this is the movement state machine. Right, so we could uh, loop through each of these and connect that signal like we do here for the finished. We could um, get the parent and loop through all of that. Or we can do it in the ready function of the motion. We just need to create the signal. So we can create the signal and it will just be called velocity updated and it will emit a velocity and it's a vector three. And so in the ready function, we can write velocity updated dot connect to owner dot set velocity from motion. And that way, any state that inherits this class will automatically connect that signal to the function in the parent script. So here on calculate velocity, we can go velocity updated dot emit velocity. And we can test that out in just a minute. Okay, finally, we need to calculate gravity, right? So we can go func calculate gravity and it really is just going to take a delta, which is a float, and returns void. And this really isn't going to be that different from this particular calculation. So we can just go if not owner dot is on floor, then velocity dot y plus equals gravity, which is a constant we created before, multiplied by delta. Okay, so now we've got a fairly bare bones state that we can inherit from. Let's get started creating the individual states that actually control the character. All right, guys, I hope you found that helpful. This class is going to help us create very clean state code for our next episode where we actually create all of these states and get our character moving again. If you're finding this series helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to get access to every single episode in this course, you can join as a channel member or join the Patreon. And if you want outright access, then you can buy on Udemy. I'll see you all next time.